gets me so amped every time. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's Midwest Flyways podcast. I'm your host, Joey Vassallo, and across the table from me, I have the other Joey, Joe Hines. That's right. The other Joey Vassallo. Yeah, the other. Followed by the other Joe Hines. <laughs> My brother. My brother. <laughs> People mistake us for that, actually. That's insane. Uh, I, yeah. was, I just, st- I've talked about it so many times, but the amount of people that have come up asking mm-hmm. me to take a picture with Joe Hines. Yeah, and I'm right. like, yeah, just tag me on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, like, hey, uh, thanks, but uh, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> I love getting that text from Joe. Mm-hmm. Another one? Yeah. That doesn't that's awesome. happen in a little while. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. God, but thank you for coming on the podcast again. Yeah, what is this, fourth, fifth? I, I was going to say it's the fourth. Fourth time, yeah, dude. Annual guest, dude. Yeah. Hell yeah. You're not too far away, so... It's no, fun. Gives it's, me something to do on a Wednesday night instead of just sitting around. Right. Well, one of the things I wanted to ask you about, like, obviously you're a full-time guide. You have The Roost, which yep. everyone should go subscribe to. The By roost, the way. TheRoostTV.com. I was going to say, do you want to plug anything right now? Yeah, dude. You know How what? How can they find you? Um, You can find me on Instagram, Grinder Heinz. You can find me on Snapchat, Mr. Heinz. That's <laughs> M-R-H-E-I-N-T-Z. But I want to try this out for a second. You know what the Upside app is? I have heard of it, yeah. The Upside app. So if, like, you know, you're hunting, you buy groceries, you go get gas, all that stuff. I've heard of this on the radio, and I never really was like, ah, shut up. And then my buddy introduced me to it, and he's like, yeah, dude, all these gas stations and a lot of these, you know, restaurants and grocery stores, they give you money back if you take a picture of your receipt. And my buddy showed me, and he had, like, $400 on it. I was like, no way. He's like, and that's money you won't have. Right. You know, you're, you're going to buy gas and groceries. But now they're giving you money back, and all you got to do is take a picture of your receipt. I was like, shut up. So it always asked me, like, hey, invite friends and stuff. So, you guys, I'm inviting you because you're my friends if you're listening to this. Help your boy out. My invite code is Joe, J-O-E-596-399. (laughs) J-O-E-596-399. The Upside app. Yeah, I'm telling you, it kicks ass. So go download that thing and just use it when you're getting gas and groceries. Take a picture of your receipt, and there you go. Sure. So that's my plug, Joey. Didn't see that coming, did you? I did not see that. <laughs> <laughs> I did not expect that to take three and a half minutes. But That's right, yeah. Well, you're welcome. No, I appreciate that. Yeah. So, like, you're running the roost with Scott. Yep, the and, com. And you're taking people guiding hunting. Yep. What are you doing the rest of the year? Are you still doing the trailer park? Yeah, that, guy yeah. Stuff. So, but I mean, I cut it way back. I mean, I'm maybe doing 15 hours, maybe a week, if even that anymore. You know, just seeing a lot of crazy characters still. Mm, no, not really. Are not, they all, not yet this year. Are it's they pretty all? hot? So they're all hibernated inside. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I really don't got any crazy stories about that place. I've just been, you know, planting lawn seed and watering grass mowing grass and right doing a lot of uh, landscape and stuff and blah 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 i just picture you hammered working there like a jim Leahy. Mm-mm, nope not at all i don't drink when i work it's very serious yep mm. I, mean, I just that, i can't get trailer park boys out of my head yeah yeah i mean i've never i think i watched like two minutes of trailer park boys everybody gives me that same response that's actually unacceptable and when i watched it i was like wow this is this is fucking dumb. No, you lose brain cells. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm like, I can't watch this. That's why I watched it when I was 20. You're right. You know, so 10 right. years ago. Right. Have you seen that show, uh, I Think You Should Leave? No. On Netflix? Great. It's one of the, Great show. One of the stupidest <laughs> shows ever, but it is so funny. It's so funny, dude. Mm. Dumb. It's like Trailer Park, but I could see people, like, I'm like, well, you watch Trailer Park Boys? That's dumb. And then you would watch that and be like, Joe likes this? That's <laughs> fucking dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Is that where that meme comes from where he's like, you sure about that? Yeah. Are you sure about that? Dude. Yeah. yeah. I've seen a couple of clips of that show and it is hilarious. Mm -hmm. I watched the one where he's like selling a dog door Mm -hmm. and he's like, yeah, you know, you don't let any critters in because I was in in my living room. You don't want this guy to come in. It's like this weird demon. Yeah. Weird demon (laughs) thing. Yeah. Yeah. Or he he got done with the interview and he's like, hey, I think that door is a push. And he's like, no, it's a pull. I was here yesterday, but he was already like too dedicated. So he like broke the door opening it and like woods just popping off. It was fucking good. It's a pretty funny show. Stupid show, but I liked it. I thought it was funny. Oh, keep bumping this mic, dude. It's okay. Okay. It's totally okay. 
Sounds but good. um so you're just you're just really enjoying your off season going to a bunch of uh country music concerts and hanging out and shit. Yep. Other than yep. working fifteen hours a week. Do my do my annual two Mexico trips and yeah, I just had Winstock last weekend. That was pretty fun. Three day bender. Hoof. <laughs> <laughs> I just I Hoof. love going to your Snapchat when you're at a thing like that and you're just yelling, Hey Turkey Yo, constantly. Turkey, dude. Yeah. Yeah. People are Turkey gets a lot of attention in places like that too, dude. Almost like more than me. It's like, God dang. I met a guy not too long ago. Uh, where the heck was I? I was someplace out and he's like, Joe. He came running out to me. He's like, what are you doing here? I'm like, oh, nothing. He's like, you got Turkman with you? I'm like, no. And he's like, damn, I wanted to take a picture with him. <laughs> I was like, just him, huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Awesome. But uh, yeah, he, he people like the old Turkster. How could you not like Turkey? I know. He's dude. just this silent yeah. little teddy bear. Right. Big basically. ass teddy bear. Yeah. And you get him drinking. He's not that. He's not that silent even when he's not drinking. Right. But he's a party animal, that's for sure. Yeah, he is. He's a fucking party animal. Dude, I had a a picture. I have a whole like cardboard box because all these pictures are from my office. So like I went on this app and printed all these pictures for like four bucks a piece. Okay. So like all my favorite hunting memories and shit. Yeah. And that one of. Uh, at that 4th of July party you had at oh, Turkey's yeah. Farm. Yep. That was a fun day. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. That was ridiculously fun. Guns and beer, dude. Guns and beer. Yeah. They say that you shouldn't mix them, but it's kind of fun when you do it. It's pretty fun when you <laughs> mix them. It's pretty fun when you mix them. Right, exactly. I can't say I've ever done it. Right, yeah, me neither. I mean, I mean, we're professionals under the supervision of professionals. You're a professional, right. I'm a professional, so I could chaperone you, you chaperone me <laughs> type of thing. Right. So, but exactly. we've never done it, but... I've never done it. We always thought about trying. Yeah, we we really did think about trying. Drink beer and shoot trap. I mean, what's wrong with that? It's pretty fun. And honestly, it was pretty safe. Yeah. It was super safe. Yeah. It wasn't like, okay, everybody shoot at once. Yeah. No, it was like, okay, you two guys go stand six feet apart from each other. Not COVID stuff, but just like, yeah, that's right. No one's going to shoot each other. Right, exactly. And I mean, everybody there wasn't dumb either. Right. Everybody grew up around guns and. Common sense was common. Right. There. And I even killed a pigeon ban. That's right. Yeah. Right. Annie Oakley for a pigeon ban. Yep. That's right. Yeah. That was fun. I seen that thing fly over. I was like, God dang, dude. And I was like, I can't remember. I think I was getting clay pigeons. I'm like, hey, there's a pigeon up there. And it's just, it's got to be a racer just going by like that because there's no silos. Ten minutes later, I bent down to grab a beer out of the cooler, and I was like, you guys, the firing line, what you were in. I was like, you guys, that pigeon's right above you, and all the guns just went up. La, 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 la. I ran over to it like, oh, my God, it is banded. God, that was nuts. It's, Legend Outfitter party, and we kill a banded pigeon. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was buggy as shit once the sun went down. Mm-hmm. But good Lord. Fireworks, it's, guns, beer. Yeah, we're, we, uh, me and Trevor are actually going to go, I think, to Wisconsin and get more fireworks. This Friday. Nice. Do the same thing, but out at Trevor's. Nice. How is his new place? Is it awesome. just awesome? Yeah, it's sick. Super sick. How far really is that cool. from you? 35 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. Oh, so it's pretty far. It's, yeah. I mean, not. Because uh, he's maybe, west maybe, and you're maybe, south. Maybe even less than that. Maybe like 25 minutes. It's not far at all. Just I've been a, seeing him a lot this year. Have you? Yeah, I did some work at the place where he works. Oh, yeah, yeah. That place is gorgeous. Oh, my God. Holy shit. Well, and then I saw in his Snapchat story that a dump truck went into the lake. You see that? Yeah. Right off of Excelsior <laughs> yeah, Boulevard. Yeah, the tire popped. And then my, my aunt called me because <laughs> of my reception. She's like, is this even happening? Why haven't I gotten an official invite? Right, you know, right. We're stuck in fucking traffic. <laughs> and this and that. I was like, where are you at? She's like, Excelsior Boulevard. I was like, there's a dump truck that went in the lake. She's like, no way. That and sucks. then she drove past and they're still craning it out of the water and shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember that thing sinking in there. Like that guy got out too. Yeah. Yeah, luckily. I mean, he had luckily to have there been. luckily there wasn't a car coming the opposite way either. That oh, so he came across bad. the lane and yeah, into the went, water? Yeah, he broke through the median into the water. It's crazy. <laughs> oh my god. Insane. Had to have been drinking. No, he was sober. How do you do that? Uh, the tire popped. Oh, the tire popped. Yeah, and there's so much weight in the back that it just boom went through the median. Oh god. Big old splash. That would be so traumatic. Yeah, that'd be crazy. Honestly. Because mm-hmm. have you ever been in a, like a real bad car accident? No. Fender benders. Dude, Nothing I was nuts. I was uh, 18, driving to work. I stayed up too late, mm-hmm. partying, 
And then my buddy Noah, who I was living with at the time, came home. He was hanging out with his girlfriend. So I waited up until like 3 a.m. for him, and we had to leave the house by 545 <laughs> to go insulate a townhome complex. Jesus. And I stayed up to tell him, you have to drive tomorrow. Right. So I had like a 2005 Tahoe at the time. Mm -hmm. He's driving, and I'm passed out in the passenger seat the entire time. And I woke up like two minutes before we're at the job site. You know, you can just feel the turns, and you just like wake up and... I had a five-hour energy shot in the dash, and I without even opening my eyes, I just reached for it, opened it, started drinking it, and the road goes like this, like really gradual. Yeah. And I opened my eyes, and I see the road going like this, and we're still kind of going, going straight. straight. Yeah. And I'm like, Noah, Noah. Yeah. I look over at him, and he's just like this. Sleeping? <laughs> I'm like, you know you're driving, right? Oh, <laughs> shit. And I grabbed the wheel, and we popped the curb, smoked a tree going like 40 miles an hour. Oh, wow. wow. And so airbags deployed, and I don't know if you've ever been off. No. Dude, they put this powder around the airbags. Oh, yeah. So that, like, they can actually deploy. Yep, yep. And uh, I couldn't breathe. Just blasted. Oh, it was just like. <laughs> right, right. And so, like, we hit the, hit the tree. He broke his face in, like, 17 spots. Like, completely trashed his face. Shoosh. And uh, he's screaming, and he's the quietest kid you've ever seen. Just yeah. blood all over his face. And I yeah. get out of the car, and I, like, instantly fall to the ground. I'm like, what? The engine block came through the dash. Oh, shit. And hit me in the knee. Oh, shit. And I still don't have feeling in my left knee. Oh, wow. Like, all the nerves are dead. Wow, that's messed up. And so we go to the hospital. There's an ambulance driving by as it happened. And Perfect. they stopped. Perfect. They're like, do not move. Yeah, Do right. not move. Yeah, right. You could have a anything. broken back or yeah, a neck. Yeah, right, anything. I'm like, no, I'm fine. You should check him, though. Yeah, yeah. Because he's, like, screaming. Right. And they're like, okay. So we go to the hospital. I get discharged immediately, and then they had to put a metal plate in his face. So he has, like, a metal plate here, here, oh, and here. Oh, so he's caved his face in. Bad. Luckily, so, like, he didn't hit his brain or anything. And, right. You know. So he hit the wow. steering wheel, boom, and then mm -hmm. airbag deployed and punched him backwards. So it was just, it was really bad. Wow. And so Scary. then we get into... <clears throat> and, you know, I didn't cry or anything. Like, we are fine. And then uh, my buddy picks me up from the house, like, three hours later. He's like, yeah, no, I just got to stop at the bank. So he goes, you know how they have those long lines with, like, little concrete pylons right next to it? Mm -hmm. He accidentally popped the curb going, like, a mile an hour. And, dude, it was instantly back to that moment. Boom, smash, and the airbags came back up. <laughs> dude, my body, like, my whole body oh, seized no. up. Yeah, I'm right. like, huh. Yeah. God. Yeah. And I like What's opened happening? up the door, rolled out of the car, and I just started uncontrollably weeping. Yeah, right. Like, and, I, oh and he's God. like, Are you okay? Or like, Are you okay? Yeah. I'm like, I don't know what's wrong. Yeah, like, right. I don't know I'm what's just going crying. On. I don't know what's going on. Right. Something's trying to kill me. <laughs> Shit's traumatic as hell, dude. I bet it is. God, that would suck. No, I've never been in anything that bad, so. Yeah. <laughs> don't no want shit. either. No, it's bad, dude. It is not good. No. But let me bring us into one of our sponsors here. Sounds good. Guys, this podcast is sponsored by First Light. Joe, I don't know if you've ever tried any of the First Light stuff, but they came out with this uh, double rugged wool. And so you know if you wear like real wool, it kind of pills and it gets like crappy after a long time. So they doubled up the material and like they extra weaved it. I guess they made extra weaving. Like they took more time with the sewing machine. And so it actually stays like perfect much, much longer. And then it's also like heavy, which is really nice. So it keeps you super warm. Nice. And they also have a bunch of other waterfowl stuff, but that's what I'm going to talk about today. So go check out firstlight.com. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so don't get in any car accidents, dude. I'm not going to. Well, you look at nope. Nick Johnson, bro. Yeah, I know. That was a bad one. Yeah, Nick. Nick. Yeah, it looked like he should have been dead in that one. How is he not dead? I don't know. That car looked like it got its legs yanked off. Right, and yeah. It looks like even the whole monster truck drove over him, you know? Wild. Right. Well, it's like, think about how many times you've been scouting and you're just, like, going. And yeah. you realize, like, oh, I haven't been looking at the road for, like, quite some time. Yeah, that happens a lot. God. I was scouting and with my car out west, and I ended up on a rock about 20 yards from a slough. Crashed. Oh, shit. Yeah. The gravel pulled me off the road and threw me up on a rock. Pretty huh. sweet. Holy <laughs> Screw that. Yeah. Dude, I was just in uh, North Dakota this past year, and Wade was there, and we're going to meet up with some guys that were, like, 20 minutes from us. So it's like, yeah, let's go have, like, duck gumbo and mm -hmm. drink a couple beers. Ben Potter was there, if you know who he is. And we're like, yeah, let's go meet Ben. 
So we're going and it's a super dark road. It's like right off the interstate. Wade and I are talking. I'm looking at my directions. And all of a sudden, the it says like take a right turn. And dude, it was a dirt road. And it just stopped right oh there. God. I'm like, Wade's like, hey, Joe, Joe, Joe. Yeah. And I'm watching the road. Yeah, right, right, and I right. can't even see it. Right, right. And I went like 15 feet into a slough. Oh, man. I like locked up my brakes and it was just, just going. And I went over this hill Jeez. down in the slough. And he's like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> like, I don't Jesus know. Jesus Christ. It just happens. Yeah, it happens So fast. quickly. Especially at night, too. Yeah. It's scary. No. But anyway. But anyway. Um, <clears throat> you know what I've been getting a lot of questions about that I think is a really good question for you, Joe? We just put it up on our Instagram today of like what people want to hear about and have us do videos on and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. By far the most asked question is decoy spreads. Yeah. And it's so, there's so many different variables. Kind of. It's like, what is your go-to spread? Like when you go out and you hunt, are you really relying on your scout or you do, do you have like a, a normal everyday spread? You know, there's some guys, I've been, I've been asked this a couple of times, there's some guys that just look into scouting way too much. Like, oh, I got to, you know, I got to watch the way they come into the field. I got to, you know, I mean, the only two things that I'm wondering is I hardly ever put them to bed either, by the way. I'm just like, oh, they're going to that field. I got permission for that field, or I got permission to the field next to it, and they're flying over that field. I just know what direction they're coming from is really all I care, you know? Sure. So I just go and do that, watch where they're, you know, what routes they're coming off of, what field they're going over. Okay, this is the field I'm going to hunt. And then that's that's basically it. And then I'll go out there, and I usually will set the decoys almost – exactly the same way I which do is what a lot of times i don't like putting decoys right behind the blind because i feel like it just doesn't it looks weird you know like your blinds are so bulky that you're high you're you're hiding half of that decoy if not more so it just looks weird and birds if, if you're trying to look like a big grass cover birds are never really that close to it you know mm -hmm. so i and i don't want birds landing behind me so I'll put the layouts in, and we usually go about 20, 30 yards right and left, like on the shoulders. Make it thick about 10, 15 yards in front of you, and then have a kill hole on your right foot and on your left foot, and then just scatter family groups. And I use family groups all year long. It's not just a September thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because geese aren't just congested into one ball come November. They're all over the field. They're all – there's there's – 40 of them here, there's 10 of them here, there's two of them over here. I mean, yeah, in September they're more in their family groups, but, I mean, really not really. I used family groups throughout the whole whole year, from September to December. So, pot them up, run them out 10, 15 yards in front of you, have a kill on your right foot or your left foot, and then just family group it out. Like, the front and the right and left side are pretty dense, and then just run them out and just make little, you know, six-pack, two-pack, four pack, another six pack, eight pack deep. Mm -hmm. And I just had a video. You don't want to run them horizontal in front of you. You want to run them vertical because if you start putting them horizontal, now you got walls up and they're going to come in and land with a lot of those. But if you give them like little vertical shoots, a lot of times they're going to come right in there. And don't get me wrong. Sometimes those birds will just jump and come to the mass. But I notice when you start putting up walls of vertical decoys, they land back there with them, you know. In the in the wall, yeah, you're saying? they'll land on the other side of the wall, which can be far away from you if it's on the other side of your kill hole, you know. Sure. So, I mean, my kill holes are usually here to the pool table, here to the couch, right? So what? Oh, you make them pretty yards, big? 10, 15. Yeah. But I don't want them landing. Like, you start putting big groups of vertical decoys from here to your wall that's 25 yards away. Now they're landing out there even further, further you know. Yeah. So I just try to stay away from that. So do you feel like they, they like flying past birds to get to the kill hole? Yeah, then? they'll fly past birds. They they land with decoys, you know. Mm -hmm. But I just feel like when you start putting out vertical walls in front of you, it gives them more of a reason to land further back out, like maybe flying over that many. Now, snow geese, completely different story. Right. But Canada geese, what, you know, my main thing is, 
is I just like running vertical lines out in front of me all the way like right and left shoulder. Yeah. It's going to be so dense that you're going to have that wall, but you want to be on the back end of that. So when they're landing, they're looking at the kill hole. If you start putting decoys behind you, now you're in the kill hole and they have more reason to look at you and you're blind. Sure. So we try to get away from that too. I want all the, all their views out front. So, so, they're, so they're looking at 100, 200 decoys before they're looking at the top of the spread. Like, oh, there's a bunch of layout blinds there. Yeah. So how, how far apart are you making those lanes? Like in between vertical legs of deeks mm, coming out? You know, good question. It just, that's really the only thing that varies. Depends on the size of the field and whatever else. Migrators, we have them pretty far apart. Like our, our, right, our right foot wing to our left foot ring, wing could be. 40 yards, mm. but you're trying to funnel them into the front. Yeah. In front of you. So, I, I mean, there's some time, I, I'd say 15, 20 yards apart. Yeah. Boom. Group here, group here. Here's your mass. Well, you can't see the table, but you know what I'm saying? So, you're not really doing letters or anything mm. like that. You're just, you look at it and you're like, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've been doing it for so long. And right. But the problem is when you've been doing it for so long, it's so subconscious. Right. It's hard to explain it. It's hard to write it up, but I've written it out plenty of times on the roosttv.com. <laughs> yeah. I got a lot of it on there. What does I it mean, cost to subscribe to that again? Three ninety nine. Three ninety nine. dollars Yeah. I mean, if this TV worked and you gave me a little iPad, I could. <laughs> yeah, we, we should. I want to get a fourth camera out here so that we can put stuff on the TV. Yeah, that'd be cool. So if we have a Zoom guest, you have a <coughs> camera here so that we switch our stuff around. Oh, yeah, that'd be bad around. Ass. Yeah, yeah, I didn't even think about, you know, yeah, you could mirror somebody on there. Yeah, I didn't Good really idea. feel like putting up our logo on the TV today. And yeah, whatever. Whatever. You can't even see it in those two cameras. Right, so. right. Fuck it. But, like, all these, all these young guys are just so, like, they, I feel like there's no trial and error. Mm-hmm. You know, like I've, I've done everything a mm-hmm. hundred times and mm-hmm. fucked it up a hundred times, obviously. Mm-hmm. But like, what do you do with your decoy spread? What do you do with your decoy spread? I, I mean, I lot, honestly don't people, even think about it. I, yeah. I mean, a lot of people dense them up in just a perfect U shape. I've seen that. Or they scatter them way too far apart where it's like, dude, all your two pats and singles are going to land 80 yards over there, 80 yards over there. I mean, there's an art to it and it only comes with trial and error. You just got to keep doing it and then you just figure it out. Right. It's hard for me to explain without drawing it out. Mm-hmm. So. What, w- what would you say is like the a good number of full bodies or silhouettes for guys she, just she, getting into it? That that varies, dude. I well, mean, yeah. When I, was, when I was in high school and even middle school, I mean, I was cruising around with three dozen full bodies and killing them. Right. And then, you know, I, I remember that one time <coughs> we had six dozen decoys out and I thought we had a monster spread. <laughs> And we burned them too. Mm-hmm. But now it's like shit between me and Trevor and Ben we're putting out. And even, you know, me and Connor and stuff, we're putting out 50 dozen, 60, 70 dozen, stuff like that. But yeah. it just all depends on what's flying over your field, how many birds are in the area. And I mean, I'm not afraid to go out with 12 DSDs and set them in a green grass field and shoot a limited geese. Right. You can do that too. I was going to ask you with – silhouettes becoming so popular between big owls and dive bombs and it's just like so much easier to have like a large spread yeah. i feel like this year it's going to be a huge year for a minimal spread you know like 30 dsds or mm-hmm. three dozen whatever full bodies as long as they're placed properly yeah you know mm-hmm. i think it's gonna murder birds so. this year well especially in high pressure areas like let's just say fergus if you go everyone's on a hilltop Mm-hmm. And they're throwing out one to two thousand decoys. Yeah. If you go out there in a depression with four dozen, I think you'll murder. Yeah, good. You know, it's just different. Again, that's trial error shit. Mm-hmm. Neither of us have the right answer, Joey. <laughs> you ain't got the answers. <laughs> I didn't do this. <laughs> I didn't do this. But yeah, no, I I agree. There's times where I've gone out there like, dude, let's just th- throw out these two dozen, three dozen, and we burn down twenty, thirty of them. And right. then there's times it's like, I think we need to put out. 40 dozen we need to put out 30 dozen you know tre- trevor bring your trailer we'll put out our our 40 dozen and then the next day i'll be like oh, i'll just bring my trailer you don't gotta bring yours mm-hmm. which is you know 16 dozen so every day is different you just again the longer you do it the more you see it right you know cal you and i bit. cal and i have had the the dsd debate mm-hmm. and he's never really seen it 
like how much of a difference that DSDs make in oh, the field. Yeah. What do you think is the biggest, like what makes them so different when you set a spread of DSDs versus whatever other full Just, body? You know, it's it's hard, very hard to explain unless you've hunted over them. Because when you hunt over them, just the 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 comfort in their dedication, if you will, and when they, just they give and, it up, yeah, and they're so comfortable to land amongst them, very close. And then you see it all the time where people are, or you see it all the time where geese they'll land and then you know they do the <laughs> something isn't right, right, and then next thing you know you're waiting for more to land and they're starting to walk way out. Mm-hmm. 40 50 yards from you and then all the other groups are landing with it with dsds i noticed they land very comfortably and um after they land they either start feeding under a minute or they lay down like right away i mean yeah they yeah. do do that with other decoys so you know you know every situation is different but i feel like they do it more often with dsds and it's just another tool in the arsenal where you you can pull out that last stop or last right, resort. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of guys running. Oh, it's a migrator day. We need to run 30 dozen Bigfoots. Dude, I would not be afraid to run my three dozen DSDs on a migrator day and have the same results. Yeah. Unless I had like 10 guys. Then, you know, more guys, bigger spread, in my opinion. <clears throat> Smaller spread, if it's just me and you, throw out three dozen and we'd break down some migrators. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> so... That's crazy, dude. The it's I always so think many about different aspects. It's just always you're always juggling shit, you know, day to day thing when you're doing it all the time and often. Right. And this is gonna work. This isn't gonna work. And you just it's that's why you're hunting them. You're chasing them, trying to figure them out. Yeah, I just I remember that that mallard hunt where we took out shit. I don't know, like two dozen DSDs because I don't even think you had the three dozen at that point. I had to have good. Well, I think maybe we just put out the two dozen. I we didn't put out a whole lot Mm-mm. in a grass field. Yep. And we should have killed our limited mallards that day. Mm-hmm. But just watching what those mallards did, yeah, was dumb. I've they never act seen... like they're real birds. Right. You know, it's insane. That's, I guess that's what I'm saying is when geese decoy to them, they act like they're they decoy like they're real birds on the ground. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's the coloration, the body size, the yeah. positioning, yep. all of the above? Everything, yeah. Because they are very anatomically correct. I mean, if you walked into a grocery store and there's a bunch of silhouettes of humans, you'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> but then if you walked in and there was well-dressed, very well-done wax human beings, mm-hmm. it'd take you a little bit before you figured it out, I bet. Right. <laughs> Speaking of that, have you seen those? It's my theory, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> have you seen those ridiculously realistic sex dolls? Of course not. Of course not. <laughs> yeah. It'll just like come up on like Snapchat and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. this guy says he's never going to date a real woman ever again. Uh-huh. He spent $50,000 on this sex doll. Yeah. And it's just like, ugh, it is so creepy, dude. Yeah, it is creepy. And they really don't even look human either. I don't think so either. Yeah. But, uh-huh. you know... He spent fifty grand. Fifty grand. I mean, it like walks, talks, yeah, the whole shebang. It's like an actual robot. I mean, there's. Oh, never mind. I didn't even go there. <laughs> I mean, for fifty grand, <laughs> you know, probably don't got to get a sex doll, but no. Well, whatever. No. So this podcast, Joe, is also sponsored by Onyx Hunt. I don't know if you use Onyx Hunt. I do. Yeah, I do every but day. Holy shit. Yeah, kicks ass. Great. Remember when you had to use the plat maps yep. back so, in the day? I got good at them all, but I, yeah, I'm glad those are long gone. <laughs> Damn. Dome. <laughs> you hit that on that thing. <laughs> Dude, I hated using the plat maps. Yeah. And when you're like on the road and you're like, I think this is the farm. Uh-huh. I don't know. Right. Back to my farm. Get out of here. Yeah, get out of here. But every once in a while, I was young enough, they'd be like, well, I'm I mean, sure. I there's a couple ducks in my slough back there if you want to hunt those. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool, Mark. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thanks, uh, Orville. Right. Thank you. No, but I've been using, uh, I don't know if you notice, they have that new crop detail. Mm-hmm. So, like, say you're going to travel somewhere. Yeah, you can yeah, see yeah. what areas have corn yeah. that right. year. Yeah. Unbelievably game-changing. Yeah, make people even more lazy. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, what do you look for when you're going to hunt? You're looking for water. Yeah. And then you're looking for corn. Mm-hmm. So, if you can do that, you're like, oh, okay, let's go to Wabe. Right. What areas around Wabe have a lot of corn? Or wheat fields or whatever. I think it just is going to save you so much money on scouting. It might, yeah. So you're not just 
aimlessly driving. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we actually have a discount code for cool. Onyx. It's uh, MWF20. Awesome. So go and use that. Get yourself an elite membership so you can get all 50 states and get yourself 20% off. Yeah, if you're anything hunting, big game, anything. I mean, it's that just, is the app to go with. It's the Onyx. app. Yeah, for sure. The app, dude. <laughs> yeah. Save yourself so much time and effort. That's right. But, um, but yeah, I just say... Uh, with the whole decoy spread thing, I've literally never really thought about it. When I was younger, I really tried to um, imitate what I saw in the field the night before. But what do you feel about, let's say there's 200 geese going into a field. Are you putting out 200 decoys? No. Are you putting out 30? Are you putting out 100? No. If I'm looking at 200 geese out in the field, I'm putting out 10 dozen. 10 dozen? Yeah, 10, 15-ish, dozen-ish. Do you feel like that's for... Or even, th- I mean, even, it depends on the field, too. If it's a chisel plowed field, I'm putting out 40 dozen, and which, and also, I'm not hunting anymore, so they're safe in there. But if it's a wheat field <laughs> with 200 geese, you know, it's anywhere from three dozen to 15 dozen, whatever I'm comfortable with. Is that so, for... Right, yellow cornfield with with 30 geese going into it, I'm putting out a dozen decoys to two dozen decoys, maybe. Is that to make them feel more comfortable or to stand out more, or what are you doing that for? For which way? So if you're... The chisel plowed? No, for like the wheat field. Right. <clears throat> yeah, just, you know, more comfortable, I guess. I mean, you got to remember, too, they're not coming out. They're not going... Leave, the first group leaving the roost isn't going to be like, all right, we just left... We're at 10 pack. We just left 190 geese behind us, and they get out there and see two, three dozen decoys. They're not counting. They're not yeah. going to be like, whoa, you know. They see geese in a field that they see geese in a field, and they're <clears throat> going to go out there. Yeah. I feel like people think a lot, way yeah, they too do. much about it. Yeah, absolutely, they do, 100%. So what? what is your advice for these kids then thinking too much, and they're always looking for how to set their decoys a certain way? Like, what's your best advice for them? Find the best place to hide and put out whatever you think you're comfortable with. Yeah. Because don't get me wrong, you get you got 50 geese in a field. You could put out 300 decoys. You're still going to kill geese. Mm-hmm. It's still going to happen. So. Sure. It's just, Joey, it buckles down to trial and error and doing it year after year after year. You just kind of get the blueprint of it, <laughs> you know? Right. You know, it's just kind of how it is. And if you're new and you're just starting out, dude. Get yourself a couple full bodies or some silhouettes, doesn't matter what brand, <clears throat> and just go out to that field and set up. What I would say is focus more on your hide than your decoy spread, and then focus more on your calling and getting better at calling before you try to set the perfect picture decoy spread. Yeah. I've had times where the decoys look like dog shit, and we smoked them. So. Right. It's whatever. I did a video earlier this year i don't know if uh we put it out yet or not but it's like what are the five most important things about hunting hide is number one calling is number two Mm -hmm. and like knowing what kind of a field you're hunting Mm -hmm. is like number three traffic or Mm -hmm. um a feed Mm -hmm. and then it's decoy spread that's right because how many times everybody's gonna say scouting obviously Mm -hmm. i mean yeah i'm not gonna go set a decoy spread in the nevada desert and magically focus on my hide and blow my goose call and kill limited geese i mean the scouting thing is without say like we know you know Mm -hmm. you got to be where the geese are yes they got to be flying over your field and then when you find that they're flying over your field those are the five most important things hide calling snacks chew (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> for yes. sure just zen out in the goose blind people just don't people overlook that goose calling so much because it just intimidates them it really does that's that's the really the bottom line people are just you know i don't need to be a better caller i kill enough geese well if you and your two three buddies you hunt with all the time learned how to call much much better your numbers would probably double the quadruple i'm telling you why do you think you think it's just putting in too much work for people or what Something. why they don't yeah, I don't know. I don't know why that, why, I mean, it's, it's such a cheaper tool. I mean, how much money do you got in decoys? Thousands of dollars. Right. And gas and trucks and trailers. You buy a $100 goose call, $80 goose call, $60 goose call, $150, $180 goose call, whatever. Learn how to blow it. That's like your most dangerous tool. Right. But people just, 
I don't know. Well, how many how many geese have you killed while you're picking up your decoys? The trucks and the trailers yeah. are in the field, yeah. and you call in a and goose. You're calling and yeah, calling flocks, all that stuff. Right. That's when I realized like this is way more important. Yeah, yeah. Than anything else. Yeah, that's right. You know. Like, yep. hide is trash. You're literally in the middle of a field mm-hmm. with a trailer right. and a truck. Right. There's right. eight right. people walking around. There's four dogs running around. Yep. And you go, balak, balak, balak. Yep. And that one stupid goose just, hmm. You know what I'd say, too? That's in that top five. It might even knock one or two of them out. Is visibility. Like in, in, a, in what case? And, like, we are de- you're, you got to make sure your decoy is visible is what I'm getting at. Yeah. Like, if, yeah, you can have the perfect hide, the best calling. But if they can't see you. But if they can't see you in a chisel plowed field or a black field or something, you ain't going to do you any good. But you don't want to hunt in a chisel plowed field, right? Nope, I don't. Because you can't drive in it. Can't really drive in it. The hide usually sucks. And I've had it so, don't get me wrong, dude, I've killed good stacks hunting chisel plowed cornfields. But most times the geese will just come out and they're like, God, we can hear you, but we can't really see you. That's why when you put out, 20, 30, 40, 50 dozen in a chisel plowed field, and you take 50, 100 yard step back, you can't barely even see. You're right. like, I can see 20, 30 decoys. They just blend in so bad. That's what sucks. That does suck. Mm-hmm. But you know, with. That's um, why I try to find a field to run traffic on that field. Right. You know, something right. that's not plowed. I think they're getting smarter, though. I think so. Like the geese, like the last couple of years, they will, you'll have a perfect traffic field, bunch of decoys, you're super visible. But they go to that chisel plowed because they know they're safe. Oh, baby. You At least. Gotta, you just got to pluck out the ones that are new or the ones that are dumb. Mm-hmm. But in October, pretty hard <laughs> to do so. Just quit hunting in October. Right. <laughs> I'm going to start drinking in October. Are you? No. Dude, Maybe I can't. I, I can't stand October in Minnesota anymore. Sucks. Sucks Last bad. two years, has been unbearable. Anyway, really. North Dakota sucks, too. Wisconsin sucks. Jesus. What do you think that is? Is it lunar? Is it... Uh, it's just... They don't need to do anything? Yeah, it's warm it's, enough? it's a weird, stale weather thing. It's hot, chilly. I don't know. It's a, hardly ever a cloudy day, I feel like, in October. Yeah. Like, God dang. And then when you do get one, they still fly half hour past shooting times. Like, damn. Right. So, so, like, you have all these young kids, I'm sure, messaging you on Snapchat and Instagram... And whatever. And if you could give all these kids one advice, one piece of advice, all at the same time, what would that be? Learn how to goose call. Just plain and simple. Learn plain how to goose simple, call. Probably, yeah. Just learn how to goose call. It's the steroids to the hunt. Yeah. So. I agree. Yeah. I mean, that's Don't why. Don't be afraid we... to knock on farmers' doors either, because a lot of times they're not as mean as you think they're going to be. Right. You're not going to get a shotgun shoved in your mouth and ridiculed. Somebody's not going to go on like your hometown Facebook page and be like, "This fucking dweeb <laughs> thought he could come up and hunt my geese." Like that's not going to happen. He's, they're usually very polite about it, and they'll tell you no, or they'll tell you yeah. I can't tell you how many times where I'm like, "Fat chance," but I'm still going in the door. Right. And I'm almost bending my steering wheel forward because I'm screaming so loud because he gave me permission. You know. <laughs> It's like, God damn, no way. (laughs) Where do you think that comes from, like that angst of asking? Is it rejection or is it? It's just the same thing of talking to a girl at a bar, basically. Same thing. I mean, how many times, well, not you because you're a sly dog, but (laughs) how many times have you, you know, seen a pretty girl at the bar and you're like, I should go say hi to her. Nah, she's probably got a boyfriend. Nah, that's probably her boyfriend right there. Mm -hmm. But come to find out when you do go talk to her, she's single and that guy she's sitting with is her cousin or brother and they're in town for a wedding and yada 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 oh and then it's even better yeah then it's even better oh okay then you seal it i think it's a little different i think like so i got i live in this town right and there's Mm -hmm. a bunch of pretty good hunting if you can get on the property and i have at this point Mm -hmm. but i remember there was a guy down the road and i it was like four days straight i saw so many geese there and i'm like so many people have seen these geese Mm -hmm. how does no one how has no one hunted it yet right i'm like hmm Fuck, why am I so scared to go and talk to this guy? Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. So I drive into his driveway, and I'm pushing the steering wheel forward because I'm like, get the fuck out of the car. Yeah, Get right, out right. of your truck and just wolf. go talk to him. Yep. So I finally get out, and I think the thing, before I go into that whole story, but I think my thing is I don't want him to, like, yeah, I'm in the area, mm-hmm. you know? He's like, well, I don't want you on my land. Okay, Sounds good. No, yeah. it's totally fine. Yeah, yeah. But for some reason, 
if I tell them who I am, they're going to talk to other farmers. And if they have a bad experience with me. Well, what's your bad experience going to do? You're not going to walk up and start cussing the guy out or. Right. I mean, as long as you're not an idiot. Right. If he tells you, no, I don't want nobody hunting it. That's the end of it. Right. You don't sit there and be like, fuck you. Nobody ever hunts out here. Your cousin doesn't fucking hunt out here. You piece of shit. You just, yeah, then he's probably going to tell other farmers about you. Right. But just keep it respectful and keep it, you know, don't be a douche. Right. Basically. I mean, it's pretty easy. Right. Some some guys aren't good at going to the doors. I've been I've been called before and been like, dude, this guy won't let me hunt. You should go talk to him. And he, I've gotten permission for it. Yeah. Several times. It's all in the approach. What is your approach? I have a script <laughs> and I am very good at it at this point. I have keys and blah blah blah. Do you have keys? I mean like key times when mm. to say things and yada yada and after all this is shut off, maybe I'll run it down. I probably won't because no, I mean, you'll I mean, end up using it. You'll be like, well, here's what I do. And I'll have to watch you on TikTok like, that motherfucker took all that from me. No, no. <laughs> we already have that video that blew up on TikTok. Which one? For asking for permission. It got like 4.2 million views. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you going up that farmer. Yeah. Yeah. That was cool. No, I'm I'm a stud at it. And that's right. I'm, I mean, yeah. I'm not. I'm some probably the second it. best in the region. Some people you know? got it. Some people just don't. Some people right. are just scared to do it. And and I understand. There's been times where I'm just like, God, not today. I just don't want to f- feel like it today. Anxious. Or you're, you, know, you mean everything goes through your head. I bet he's got a big ass dog in that driveway. I just can't see, and I'm not going up there. So what I was talking about with that guy down the road. Yeah. I'm like, get out of the truck. Yeah. Get out, you pussy. Go. Yep. Yep. And I open up the door, and this dog goes like this. On the porch, I'm like, oh fuck. Oh, here we go. And he's straight Cujo. You know the Sandlot dog. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like straight out of the Sandlot. Big dude. Head. This thing is massive. Yeah. And I start walking towards the door, and I think, you know what, this guy is super nice. Yeah. You know. And then as every step I take, he takes four steps forward, and like instantly stops. Oh, and I'm perfect. Like, oh yeah. shit. Yeah, maybe he's not. <laughs> and I start getting closer, and then he takes another four steps. Now we're about me to the couch away. Perfect. I'm like. Hmm, I don't like this. And then he starts growling. Yeah, his I really lip like kind of snarls. Yeah, yeah. I don't like this at all. I'm like, hmm. So I take a step backward, and now he takes five steps forward, and I'm like, oh, shit. No, he knows that I'm intimidated. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> and then I run back to my truck, and this dog scratched the fuck out of my truck door. Uh, and I'm just like, thanks, dude. oh, my God. And no one came out. Yeah. I just see this woman at the window I don't going know like him. this, and she's just smiling. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know him. Fuck. Okay. Like, okay, I guess I won't ask for permission when the dog's out there. I got kicked out by a turkey one time. A turkey attacked you? Yeah, a guy had a bunch of ducks and geese going behind his house. And this is a farm right outside my hometown that I've never hunted before. And I was like, I'm going to go ask him. Drove into this guy's yard in his, you know, driveway. And I look up, and here comes this turkey around his house. Running right Mm. to me. I was like, holy shit. And it came right to the window. (laughs) And I was like, whoa. And this is what back when I had my little TDI car. And I was like, You had a TDI? Shit. Yeah. And really? Like, Dude, I just sitting in the window like this, my little scout car. And I was like, holy shit. So I tried opening it, and the thing would flap every time I tried opening it. I was like, this motherfucker's not going to let me out. And it's, it's, I mean, it's not a dog, so it's not barking, making a bunch of noise. It's just right. standing here, staring me down, <laughs> and it's not letting me get out of the car. Nobody's coming out of the house. And it looked like a, like a wild turkey. I was like, damn, dude. Oh, my God. I'm out of here. So I left, and I never went back. <laughs> never asked. <laughs> never scared never of the nothing, turkey. Just bounced. Because like, if I get out and that turkey jumps on me, I'm killing this dude's turkey. Mm. And that would be the time he comes out. Like, what can I do you for what the fuck? And the turkey's laying on his back kicking. Like, hey, you care if I uh, <laughs> go on those ducks and geese in the back? Oh, my God. No, that was that was the strangest one. Dude, I had a, I had a person's cat. As I'm asking for permission, he's like, oh, don't worry about him. You know, he's cool. And I'm, mm-hmm. like, talking to this guy for, like, 35 minutes. And you can tell he hasn't talked to another human being in, like, 10 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, you're either going to give me permission or not. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, the back 40 there, you know, there's a couple of spots where and I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. Marv, yeah, come man. on. I got it from my grandpa back in 86. You know, and let me tell you about my family lineage yeah. from Germany. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. But he's talking to me in this cat keeps messing with my shoelaces and mm-hmm. it's not declawed or anything i mean this is the most feral looking cat yeah, mange yeah. and all yeah and i'm and i hate cats dude i know you love them mm-hmm. but i can't stand them whatever super allergic 
Oh, yeah. As well. And then, yeah, then I wouldn't like him either. Right. And so this cat is, like, messing with my shoelaces. He's like, oh, don't worry about Al. You know, he's fine. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. <He's> like, <laughs> he keeps, like, clawing at my shoes. And I'm like, get out of here. I, like, keep yeah, right, pushing right. it a little bit. I don't want to offend the guy. Yeah, Because right. he likes I the cat. I don't want to kick the cat. Yeah. He's like, oh, nah. I'm like, good Lord. And I can't focus on anything this guy's saying now. Right. And this cat goes, Meow. And jumps up my whole body and is just hanging on nice. my damn chest nice. with his claws. And I'm like, grab its back and it's like <laughs> in my skin. And I pull this thing ah, off and I'm like, ah, yeah. throw it off my chest. He's like, oh, looks like you're bleeding a little bit. There are t- <laughs> <laughs> Through my shirt. I'm wearing like a yellowish whitish yeah, right, shirt and right. just ruin the shirt. Yeah, right. Bleeding all down my chest. I'm yeah. like, what the fuck, man? Where can I hunt or not? I'm going to go to the vet or the emergency God. room here. This sucks. He gave me a one-day hunting pass. Nice. I'm like, thank you. God. Thanks for that. I hate I, I might need hate a shot. that shit. But no, now, like I was our designated group, like getting permission guy, mm-hmm. and I love doing it now. Yeah. It's fun. like, find some sort of commonality with them. Yeah. I love to do this. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to tear up your shit, you yeah. know? Please allow me to. I've been told no, sat and talked to him for a very long time, and been told yes. I've been told no, sat and talked to him for a very long time, and respected it, and still sat there and talked with him. No, and right. I wasn't going to ask him again, like, right. hey, since I talked to you this long. No, I'm actually talking to you because I want to talk to you now. Mm-hmm. And then just left, like, all right, cool. See you later. Like right. I said, it's all in the approach. Don't be a dick. It's true. I helped a guy clean a deer one time. He told me no immediately. And I was like, well... You want help? You're yeah, doing it by right. yourself. He's like, well, I'm not going to give you permission. I was like, no, I gathered that yeah, by yeah, you I saying no. That, dude, yeah. By you saying no. Yeah, right. Now it's just me being a good person, dude. No, I just figured I'd help you out. Well, yeah. you got a knife in your truck. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, you hold his legs like this. And yeah, I'm like, right. okay. Yeah, right. What kind of guy goes deer hunting and doesn't bring a knife? Right. Well, he was cutting it up himself, and he's like, you cut that side, and I'll cut this side. And I was like, okay. Oh, so we're oh, double it's butchering hanging it. up or Yeah. It? Oh, I got you. I thought. Yeah, I don't know what I thought. I thought you like some guy killed a deer, was walking to get it, and you're like, "Hey!" <laughs> guy just shot it off the his back army. patio. <laughs> walking to his backyard to go get it. Oh shit! Somebody's here. I care if I goose hunt. Uh. <laughs> Dude, when you go to North and South Dakota, obviously they hate us. Yeah, because they ain't us. That's right. You know, but at the same time, it's just because of where we're from. Best goose hunters in the world are Minnesota, dude. Fucking at me. I didn't say it. Straight up. I didn't say it. Everybody says it. Thank you. Minnesota boys are. Know how to kill some birds. That's right. Know how to kill a couple. That's right. Don't get me wrong, there's some good ones out there, but in my opinion, I think I'd have to juggle it with Illinois. Maybe not anymore because. A little rusty. Yeah. They don't get as many anymore. They don't get as many anymore, but Minnesota. Tell you what, they've been getting good at killing specks. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, they've been hammering specks. Yeah. Which, cool. You know, but I'm good. Yeah, right. I'd rather shoot Canada's. Because what's the spec limit here? Three? Sure, I don't know. I well, no you idea. killed a shitload that one day. In Minnesota? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, something like that. I don't or know. Or is it just considered darkies? Yeah, it's just considered darkies. I'm pretty, yeah. Because it's just so right. uncommon to shoot specs here. Right. Hmm. So. You know what we haven't talked about on the podcast is our early season hunt. Oh, yeah. In Nodak. Yeah, North Dakota, yeah. <laughs> That was a decent one. That wasn't bad at all, was it? <laughs> Holy shit. I just, I can't. I, the funniest part about that whole hunt is like an hour and a half later, we're all just like, that was insane. Yeah. Was like nice. we were kind of in shock. Yeah. It didn't hit us until after we got back to the motel. Yeah. Like, whoa, what did we just do? That was crazy. Yeah. I still sit there and think about that and just smile at all the, that was such a good time. Holy shit. I remember waking up that morning. And looking at myself in the mirror when I was brushing my teeth. And I just was like, I felt it. I don't know. Mm. It was weird. I'm like, oh, this might be a good day. And as soon as I walked outside them doors and I felt how cool it was, I was like, oh, yeah. This is going to be a good day. You know, it was really cold <laughs> that day. It was, yeah. And it was like one of the first like hard, harder cold feels to it. And then I looked at the weather. It was supposed to be raining a little bit. And the wind wasn't very violent. It was like you know, eight to ten. I was like, "Oh God, we're gonna get them!" Right. Oh shit. Easy there. And we got them. No, we. Boy, did we get them. We almost limited out in early season for six guys. Yeah, fifteen birds a person. So we shot 
84, 84 birds, 83, 84 birds, Jesus. and our limit was 90. Yep. <laughs> in North Dakota? Yep. Yeah, in early season North Dakota. I would have broke my bracket. I tied my 80. I killed 82 one time and then another time. The next day, or the next week, I'm sorry, I killed 84, and I tied the 84. And you remember when everybody was going back to the truck, and I'm looking at that <laughs> that fucking dark cloud that's that just storm sh- cell hissing yeah just pissing rain and i go joy if that if i get halfway to the truck and that cloud passes that pine tree i'm going back because it's clear after that and when we started walking back i looked and i'm like dude it's like it's over it and it's starting to clear up so i went back and right when i got back that two like i would grab my gun didn't even see that there was geese in the area i was right. just running back and i heard like look, 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 look. i was like oh shit they're landing so i just jumped in Slammed a shell in, slammed another one in, and I looked up and there's like two, like very close. And I pulled up. Oh no, I only had I only had one shell in. Shot the one goose, aimed at the other one. Would could have killed it, but it got away. Click click. Yeah, I didn't have, I didn't put three shells in. I only put the one in. We would have hit eighty five, and I would have broke my record. Mm. Damn. Did you guys get any bands that day? Yeah, we got three. Right after you, and then you guys look out, and you guys are sprinting back. Right. I'm like, come on. And then, dude, after that, it was like, there's a group, there's a group, there's a group, there's a group from the north. Here's a group coming pretty hard to the east, and that was that 30-pack that was like right. pretty low that must have got off something not too far away. And those swung in, and we fucking burned that group. And then, yeah, we grabbed three leg bands. And then you remember, it was me, you, Hunter Dillon, and... Um, Robertson. R- yeah, Matt Robertson. And we killed the three bands, and I'm like, all right, you know what? Like, Matt doesn't have bands. Joey doesn't have bands. Hunter's <laughs> Hunter's got eight or nine, you know. And I'm like, screw it. You guys can just take the three. Did I not? I yeah. said that. No, you said it twice. Yeah, I said it twice. I'm like, you guys just take the three. And then I thought, you know what? Dick. <laughs> yeah, and then I thought, you know what? I'm fucking out here, too. I invited these motherfuckers. I'm like, dude, and this might be the only chance I get a band, maybe. I'm like, how come they deserve it more than I do? Mm. So I was like, screw it. So then I went in the drawing and I won one. You won one. And then Hunter I thought Dillon for won. sure I was going to lose yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And then Matt Robertson didn't get one. But luckily, what my point is, is I'm glad I did do that because that was the only band that I got all year. That was the only band you got all that year? That was the only like, band I got all year. No shit. Yeah, so I'm happy I did it. I was happy. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I've seen so many come and go. I've lost drawings that I know that I killed them and, you know, dumb stuff like that. I've given them to people like, you know what? No, I don't want to argue or I might not have. You take it. You take it. And been in, or not been in drawings that I probably should have or could have been. I just decided not to. Right. So I was like, screw it. I'm going to be a little greedy too. I'm out here too, you know? <laughs> so that, that day had one of the sickest picture pile pictures I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. Whose idea was that? Mine. <laughs> Bro, we have been over this. Yeah, okay, me and Joey argued pretty good about whose idea that was. Dude, it was like fifteen minutes laying on the bed. Like, no, you didn't. <laughs> yeah, right. Yes, I did, Joey. I said we should go put them on them fucking bins up there. But here's what here's here's what I will say right now <laughs> is Joey. We get out into the field, and then Joey goes, and I didn't know what he was talking about. <coughs> so I will admit. I had it in my brain. I didn't verbally say it, but in my brain, I was like, we should take a picture on that big bin and line them up across the bin. And Joey said, yeah, we should take a cool picture somewhere. Like we should line them up on the spiral case. I didn't know where he was talking about. I said, yeah, or, you know, we could line them up on that big bin. And Joey's like, yeah, but he was talking about the bin on the spiral case. And I just didn't pay close enough attention to see that it was a spiral case, you know? So I didn't Mm. know. I thought it had like a straight up ladder. I didn't look at it close enough. Right. So, yes, it was Joey. It's 50-50. Yes. Joey first verbally said, but, you know. (laughs) Let's put it on the spiraling staircase. Yes, right. And I said, put them on the bins. And we were talking about the same exact thing. The craziest thing is so many stairs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and couldn't put them on the stairs. We yeah. had to put like 25 of them on Up top on of top. the bin. I remember that one fell down <laughs> oh. and like landed like right by us. And we're like, holy shit, like this is dangerous. <laughs> we do get them up there, line them up, and let's get this over with. And yeah, we took the Oh, picture. dude, we were we were frightened because these are like rusty stairs. Yeah. And we're like, I don't know if this can hold all of this weight. And right. then there's six dudes standing there right. and Hunter's trying to take a picture with the drone. And I'm like, yep. hurry up. Yeah, right. Dude. Hurry up, please. <laughs> hurry up. Please, this please, is ridiculous. Please. We yep. had the whole assembly line yep. putting that up there. And I'm like, right next to the highway. <laughs> yeah. I don't like this. I'm sure can people we just, drove like, by and they're probably like, 
Fuck yeah. Dude. <laughs> that would be so... Or I'm sure there's people that drove by like losers. Oh my God. But no, I can't believe... Like the so many things came together. It's like, oh, no geese were in this field the night before, <laughs> you know. No, huh? Uh, uh, second time freshly, that, that, freshly harvested. That's the field that we go to. And like every time that Minnesota closes for that week, we always get like three to four north winds for that week. And Minnesota's closed, so you're just watching lines fly over. Mm-hmm. And it's like, dude, this is dumb. And I think it was like five, six years ago. I want to say. Somebody was like, why don't you go to North Dakota and hunt them? Because they're still open and it's 15 birds a person. And the license is only like 50 bucks. I was like, why don't I go to North right. Dakota? So then we did. Me, me, Nick Johnson, Brian Roker, and Trent Toso went up there. And we were just, uh, we were probably like an hour south of where we were. And we burned them in two days. Like we shot the shit out of them there too. Got a couple bands. And then I think the next year we just kept looking at the maps and like, this would be a good area. This would be a good area. So we went to, remember when we pulled up there in there in the field, right to the South of us had a bunch of equipment in there. Mm-hmm. We have a video film there killing migrators where we shot the shit out of them too. Mm. It's, it's called on the roost. It's called uh, uh interstate migrators. I'm pretty sure. Mm. So yeah. And then the next year I was like, well, that's a really good field. So next year, let's just go there. Right. So, Guys, this podcast is brought to you by Migra Ammunitions. Let me tell you, Joe, easily oh, the know. most consistent load. Con- like, it always clicks. Yeah, it yeah, always yeah. goes boom. Yep. Click boom. Yep. Every time. Mm-hmm. And you remember on that hunt. Yes, I do. I was smoking say that them too. at 60, 70 yards. I'm not even sponsored by the Shell Company. <laughs> and I will say, there was a lot of times where I said, holy shit, Joey. <laughs> Because he was just taking them, taking them out of the sky from like we'd volley. My gun would be empty. I'd be almost on my knees, like high fiving people, and all of a sudden Joey'd go, "What boom!" And one would just fall out of the sky. Like holy shit! It got to the point where I was like, "Oh, everybody, wait! Joey's gonna get another one." Crank! Like yeah, there's Joey with that very far shot. And dude, you're folding them too. You didn't sail them. Like no. you kill them. Like, oh, they're so done. Impressive. Done. Yeah. No. So they got this stack load where they put the. Uh, the lower BBs first and then the higher BBs, okay, yeah. like two and BB. Yep. So they put the yep. BBs first and it just is patented stack load and it just absolutely crushes them. Smacks them. So go to your local uh, hardware store, convenience store, Cabela's, Bass Pro, check them out or buy it from their uh, their online shop, Migra Ammunitions. But dude, I can't get over how we were just shooting like a couple of locals. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and it's like, mm-hmm. yeah. and it, you it's working. Whenever Joe Hines calls me, he's like, you need to get here now. Right. It's like, cool. I will literally <laughs> drop it yeah. and come out there yeah, unless yeah. it's like I can't go. Yeah, yeah. But even then, I'll probably still try Yeah, to. you're like, let me talk to the wife, uh, blah, blah, blah. Right. And you, you do end up showing up a lot. So. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Well, it's like, because I know when you say that, it's like, it's go time. Yeah. Like, what do I need to bring? And what was cool. that, like a four or five hour drive for you, too? Yeah, it was about a four and a half hour drive yeah. through the night. Yep. And uh, I don't hey. think Robertson and I carpooled. We were both uh, leaving around the same time. Yeah, I no, yeah, because I brought uh, Cujo, brought Riley. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so I drove my own truck. But you were so we, sleeping in the truck, right? Yeah, I slept mm-hmm. in the truck because I didn't get there till two thirty, and then yeah. we woke up at five thirty or something. Five thirty, something, yeah. And uh, so we shot like twelve locals right away in the morning. Ten locals, and it's kind of slow, whatever. Yeah. And then it starts pissing on us. Yep. And then everyone's like. Joe and uh, what was the other guy's name? Noah? Novak. Novak. Yeah. Novak are like, we're going to go get breakfast. Yeah. And then you're like, mm, I'm, I'm going to stay out here. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not fucking leaving. Yeah, I'm not fucking leaving, dude. <laughs> and then I'm like, well, it's been like two, three hours, so I'm going to go and uh, let my dog out. And so Hunter's walking with me. It was me. only an hour. It wasn't that long. Right. Well, it wasn't a terrible Like an long hour, time. but it was raining pretty hard, too, you know. So, yeah, it'd be a perfect time to go let the dog out, go, mm-hmm. you know, go to the truck, stay dry. Right. So then. And then it stops raining halfway out of the field because we parked like three miles away from the field. Yeah, we parked pretty far away. And uh, Joe's like, hmm, I'm going to turn back. And then that's when we saw him shoot into that flock, Carter. And we're yeah. like, oh, shit. So Hunter's like, oh. And it was should, done raining. Should it was we just go cloudy back? and windy then. <laughs> it just stopped. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh, fuck. So I ran to my truck as fast as I could, let my dog out, and I'm like, piss, piss, piss. Yeah, right. Here's some water. Here's some water. Get back in there. <laughs> Get in there yep. Ran back out to the field, and we just absolutely yeah. smashed. I knew the when that out. rain was over with the floodgates were going to open that's literally exactly what happened it was like the perfect time to let that 9 30 ish 
10 30 ish it was at that time wasn't it it? just it was a perfect recipe dude and we were decimating flocks it's not like we sailed three and killed two in the hole like we were killing 15 at times no like burning them no it was like everyone was killing one bird per shell right that's right yeah it was disgusting yeah if and not so, two, most times. And so the reason why I was taking that far far shot every time mm-hmm. is because all these birds were landing fucking perfectly mm-hmm. at like 20 yards. So Very it's close. enough for your shot to start to <laughs> spread out. Yeah. And I'd like pull up and I'd shoot in my lane, the 10 mm-hmm. and 2 lane. I go 1, 2, and then I'm just watching all these other geese fall. And I'm, I'm not wanting to double tap Waiting. Right, a right. goose. So I'm just like watching. Yep. And then I see one. I'm like, oh. That one. Clack. So it's like. And I think we were all doing a lot of that too. You know, Everybody was shooting their lanes and the shooting was phenomenal. Well, that's why we were shooting and there were, 11 plus yeah. birds every flock. That's right. It yeah. was disgusting. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. God dang, I'll never forget well, that. Well, I love when you're hunting with people that know where to shoot. Because yes. like the far left guy was shooting on the far left. Mm-hmm. His guy was shooting his. Everyone's shooting in their lanes. And then it's like one, two, watching all the other birds die. There There's you go. There's another one. Woo. Three. Yep. Another one. Yeah. God, that day was just unbelievable. Well, the flock that we shot three bands out of, mm-hmm. that was disgusting. I swear to God. Room. There was four of us. Yeah. And I swear to God, we shot 15 to 16 geese out of that. Gross. There was a lot of birds down. There was a lot of birds. They balled up yeah. right as they were landing, too. Yeah. <laughs> they were just high off the ground, all leaving that direction at the same. We were just like, yuck, 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 yuck. <laughs> The perfect left to right shot. Yeah, I was like, holy shit. Yeah. It was gross. <laughs> yeah. It was so gross. And you like you really didn't have to call that hard at them either. Once they Not saw much, you no. and they heard you, they were on. they were committed. And dude, our hide was sick because it was like this little dip, Carter. But you go out there and it's like, dude, probably from here to the wall. And it dipped down like three feet right three there. Feet. So we put the blinds in there and you couldn't see us at all. It wasn't even fucking fair to them. I loved it. Were they all migrators? So the Lo- first the first twelve my or uh, locals yeah. after that straight migrators straight migrators Sweet. straight north wind riders <laughs> dude were the bands out of the same location yeah Canada. they're out of uh, Churchill Manitoba yeah. so I I did the math that day I think it was like twenty three hundred miles mean you get the one that's one one apart from each other so we can yep. be band brothers yeah we're band brothers Titties. yeah I, I remember thinking to myself I'm like if I don't draw this fucking goose uh-huh. I'm going to kill Joe. <laughs> I'm going to kill you. I'm looking at your lanyard as you're like, yeah. no, fuck that. I don't. I haven't shot a band in North Dakota in like six years, That's so I'm right. going to do this. Yeah. And I'm just like, and this is a memorable hunt, and I like memorable bands. That's what you know. Like, I'm stuff like, like that. Listen here, man. You got 64 of them on your lanyard right now. <laughs> Look at how many goose bands I have. One. <laughs> now I have one. Yeah, I was going to say. I don't even think you had one at that time. No, I didn't have a goose band on my lanyard. But losing all those bands ten years ago now, mm-hmm. unreal. Such a gut punch. Yeah, it sucks. But yeah, I mean, is what it is, dude. Do you think we can? Uh, you think we can replicate that again next year, dude? I don't know. I don't know. You got to be out there at the right time, right? And, I mean, I've been doing that for this is four years, five years, or something like that now, mm-hmm. and we haven't got any. I mean, we kill thirty, forty, but we've never hit broke over. I think we didn't break fifty the year before in the field in front of that field, but yeah, nothing like that. But we no. always had. I think that time we had like twelve guys. Not six. Right. It's too many. Yeah. What What do you think Can is be. too many in the field for, like, layouts? It just depends on the field and the hide and stuff. Well, what's your favorite? Like, if you could hunt every single time, mash birds, like, what's the perfect amount of birds, people, whatever? <clears throat> Five, probably. Five? Yeah. Is that more like a safety thing or if it's no, more No, just like more of an enjoyable... You can actually talk know. to everybody. I, yeah. I can go back and forth, too, because I do like... I mean, if I had a choice and there is a field with... 2,000 geese going in it in some of those special places, I'd go out there with 40 people. Really? And line them up. Yeah, just burn them. <coughs> I'd love to do Just for the like sake that. of numbers. Sure. See how many geese you just can Just because I love ground. watching geese get shot and decoy yeah. them and the camaraderie of everybody. It'd be fun. I think mine is like four to six. If I were to call you and tell you, like, Joey, I'm having a last end of the season burn down. I got 39 people and you'll be the four of you. <laughs> There's, dude, this field's got 1,000 geese in it. And it's snow covered field. It's gonna be a burn, dude. You coming? Yeah, you'd say yes. I don't even gotta. <laughs> I don't even gotta wait for your answer, dude. I don't know, man. If you told me there's 39 other guys, I'd be like, first of all, uh-huh. what the fuck? Yeah, Why am right. I the last guy? <laughs> <laughs> you piece yeah. of shit. Uh-huh. But after that, I'd be like, 
What's the hide? Oh, we're sitting in fucking layouts. <laughs> yeah, layouts in the snow. Good lord. Your decoy spread would have to span out like yeah, whatever. quarter mile. Yeah, only that side can shoot, only that side can shoot. <laughs> God, it wouldn't be fun. Six shot callers. Hey, yeah, right. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. Megaphone shit. No. That'd be fun. Dude, if someone told me 40 hunters were for sure going to burn him down, I think I'd go out there just to see what kind of a circus it is. Yeah, and yeah. then after the birds stop flying, I'd be like, have fun picking this out. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, I know 40 would be pretty aggressive, but I mean, it would be fun. It'd be kind of, you know, just to see if you could limit out. I don't know. But then again, there's other things that kind of start getting crazy in the mix too. How do, how, how do you feel like is the, obviously trial and error, but... How would you feel like what is the best way that you've learned trial and error in the field? Just hunting all the time. Right. But like <clears throat> I always tell people, go out and hunt by yourself. You know? So and I don't know that you've like, especially not in the last ten years, you don't really hunt by yourself a whole lot. I always make sure I I at least go one time by myself, at least. And it's Once. it's one of my favorite days that I look forward right. to. But sometimes I get to do two. Do you like so? Do you learn from other people's mistakes or your own or like? Because the reason why I ask that is, when you're hunting with other people, you're not the only variable, right? Yeah. And so it's hard to know why birds aren't working a certain way. Because mm-hmm. I feel I, like I that think it'd ex- be nice to have other people there too, just to get their input also when you're mm-hmm. learning, right? Yeah, you kind of can learn together. And oh, that is a good idea. And oh, that is a bad idea, right? Right. I don't know. I mean, it's such a hard question to answer. Right. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you just, just got to hunt more, man. How do you get better at anything? How do you get better at hockey? How do you get better practice. at wrestling? Yeah, you just practice. You practice. You practice. You practice. You practice. Next thing you know, you got her down pretty good. Yeah. No, I think my favorite times are uh, me and, like, one of my best friends. Yeah. You know, it's just, like, you and one buddy, and you're yeah. just it's bullshitting, fun. and all of a sudden there's geese coming. Right, right. But I think for sure my favorite is going out by myself. Like like on a little slew hunt just by myself, throwing out six to eight decoys yep. and your dog. Yep. And you are just picking whatever you want out of the sky. That's You're right. taking whatever shot you want. You don't have to worry about shooting over someone. Yeah. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, it kicks ass. You know? And then if you're moving and they don't come in, you're like, oh, I was moving when they came it's in. It's my fault, yeah. Yeah. I just love it that when you, when you shoot into a flock and you – Kill three, you're like, oh, I tripled, awesome. Mm-hmm. Or if you do pick up a leg band, you're like, hey, did you shoot this? Oh, that's right, I'm by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I can I see I, I can see a Snapchat story just be like, hey, man, did you shoot this band? Oh, wait, oh, I'm hunting by myself. I'm by myself, yeah. I just like, and most of my solo hunts, I will say, I don't go out there and try to kill my five. I go out there and band hunt them and just, just right. look for leg bands. Because I usually at about that point, I've shot so many geese and, eating so many geese and process so many geese it's like i don't need to come out here and shoot five more so right. i at least try to make it up like a leg band or something right mm-hmm. how different is your spread when you're band hunting or when you're just trying to kill them smaller much smaller okay. so why is that there's so many variables when it comes to leg band hunting you if you have too many decoys out it can cover up their feet mm. so i'll put out like it's a harder to see them yeah so you're like, oh, there's 20 of them laying there. Put the binos up, and that Bigfoot foot is like that wide. And you'd be surprised on, holy shit, it's covering up that goose's foot perfectly. It's covering up like 10 of these geese. All their feet are covered by Bigfoot feet in the distance when you're looking through the binos, you know. So I just try to space them out. Like, I'll take my three dozen DSDs. And even when I did band hunt in the past, I mean, again, trial and error, I put out too many decoys one time. I couldn't see half them because there's too many bodies in the way and shit, you know? Yeah. So I always try to stay on, like, a little hill, like a downsloping hill. Or, a, no, I'm sorry, like a little rise of a hill. Or if you can look down, but you don't want it too steep where you can't see them when they land. Mm-hmm. And then going up, it's always nice, too. I'll put a line of decoys, like, you know, a dozen on my right, another whatever. Dir- like, if the wind's sitting at my back like this. I'll put a majority of the decoys on my right. I'll put a little bit on my left, and I'll put just, like, little family groups in front, just little, but they're they're spaced out pretty good. Because when they land, I want nothing but a Canada goose standing there. So when I put the binos up, I can see them. Yeah. I can see them clear as day. There's not a there's not a Bigfoot leg or a DSD covering where they are. And you just hang out and wait. Usually when a bird lands, you got to wait about a minute. 
And then all of a sudden they kind of get comfortable and they're starting to prune and prune and What do you shake. mean you got to wait? You got to wait like a minute before. So when geese are landing, I usually have my hat like over the hole and I won't move. You're in stealth mode. Yeah. Or I'll be so slid down that I'll just be peeking through something for a minute. And then after that minute is when I do the push up slowly <laughs> to, peek my, to peek my head out, you know? Yeah. And it's after that minute, they're so comfortable that they're like, oh, what's that? There's something here. You know, because as soon as you land and you go like this, they're going to be like, whoa, I'm out of here, you know? Mm -hmm. So I usually give it about a minute is a pretty good, a minute to get them comfortable. And then um, and then you can really look at them because they know you're like not a threat at that point. Yeah. And then you can get a pretty good look at them. Well, yeah, if they've already been there for that long, mm -hmm. they would have done something already. That's right. Type of a deal. Yeah. If that thing was dangerous to me, it would have happened already. And then, yeah, I just scan them over with the binoculars. Yeah, I can't tell you how many solo hunts I've landed. Hundred geese, two hundred geese, not a, and I've looked at, hundred eighty of them, not mm -hmm. a single leg band. Do you even try uh, band hunting in the snow? No. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. It's very hard to do though. So you got to get them. You only get a chance to look at like four to five of them. Mm -hmm. So when they're coming in, I'll have the binos up because a lot of times when geese are flying, when they're flying, they'll put their feet up. You know, they'll kind of be like, rrr, rrr, or someone will be hanging them already. Yeah. And you can really get a look at them. I've killed plenty of them, like, not before they even landed. Like, oh, there's one. Smash. Right. Mm -hmm. But when you you got to train yourself, too, because when you take those binos down, you're like, there's one. Oh, shit. Which one is it again? Mm -hmm. So that's another thing, too, is when I put the decoys out, I'll, I'll sit there with no geese on the decoys and be like, all right, that feeder is in front of that rester. So then when I see that feeder and rester in the binos to see that goose, I can take them down and be like, all right, it's that goose to the right of that feeder and that rester. Mm -hmm. And I kind of scan my whole spread like that. That is a tough part. So I know where they're at. When you take the binos down, you're not magnified anymore. And you're That's like, right. wait, where the fuck what is it? What bird he? was it? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I've, I've learned that mistake too. I've seen one and then put the binos down and was like, fuck, which one was it? And since there's so many, they're scattering around and I put the binos up. I couldn't see it anymore. I couldn't find it. Me and Nick J did a band hunt out in Wisconsin in the snow last year. Yeah. And I was going through the pictures. We missed at least one band. That's right. Yeah, I snow. remember him telling me that. Yeah. But then we did get one the second day. He saw it while it was landing. Yeah. Yeah. So. We landed easily 600 geese, though, in those two days. Christ. It was ridiculous. Were you just, like, frothing? Yeah. Like, come on, bro. Shoot I, something. No. I. It's I, a show, dude. It was awesome. It's so awesome. It's at, a completely different style of hunting, if you ask me. At one point, we had 75 just chilling in the decoys. Like, we yeah. couldn't check them because of the snow, but they were right. just chilling there. Yep. And then after they after they get in the snow, especially wet snow, and they start walking <laughs> yep. around, God, that plays tricks on you. You're like, yep. there's one. No, maybe not. I don't know. Because yep. they just got round snow connected to their feet where a band would be. It's like, right. God. I, I have seen so many feathers oh, hanging down by their feet. Mm -hmm. My God. Where I'm like... That's a band. Yeah, and then I keep it. watching it, watching it, watching. I'm like, damn it. Right. It's waving it in is. the wind. Mm -hmm. It's not a band. Right. Or they have like a, I've, I've seen a lot of tan lines without mm -hmm. the band without on them, but I though. thought that the tan line was their band. Yeah, yeah, got you that way too. I had one one time. I was like, God, is that a band ingrown into its leg? Like maybe they put a too small of a band really? on it when I was a kid. And I kept watching it and watching it, but I think it was just, and then I thought it was a tarsal band. Fishing well, line? Yeah, I was just fishing line wrapped around. I think it was infected and swollen. I've seen that a lot mm -hmm. over the years. I, uh, we've killed three or four of them over yeah. the years. Not very, very many, but we've I've picked a couple up with legs are all messed up. My buddy Sam Swisher, actually, I uh, had a goose fly right over me, and I was like, I was having problems with my gun. I aimed at it, and I could have killed it easily, but my gun wasn't going off. That goose went into the spread, and Sam shot it. And he's like, leg band. I'm like, no, because it was like his other leg was hanging down really bad. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and I still have a picture of it on my Facebook back from like 2012 or not 10 or whatever. But his one leg, it's like huge. His foot's huge from infection and swollen. And then on the other leg, the leg band. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, holy shit. Do you know uh, Patrick Rader? He works for Dean down in uh, Rochester. I don't think so. I think you'd recognize him. If but I've seen him, yeah. He, uh, he has a bobber on his lanyard. Really? And he shot a, a goose with a hook and a bobber. Oh, Patrick, around, tall guy that cooks? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But he uh, he has a bobber and a treble hook on his lanyard. Yeah, because he got a goose with one on there. Mm -hmm. That's pretty sweet. It's pretty cool. <laughs> that is cool. Mike, that's badass. Okay. That is. Last sponsor. Cool. Guys, you already know it. You don't want to be deaf when you're 50 years old. 
you want to be able to hear your wife the rest of your life, right? Right? Yeah. Wear sound gear in your damn ears so you can protect your hearing. Trust me, my dad at 66 drives me bonkers from construction, hunting, and just yelling at his kids. That dude is deaf as hell. So go onto their website. Either get Instant Fits. We have a discount code MWF125. It's changed. MF125. Thank you. Thank you. But what we use is the Phantoms. It's custom uh, molded to your ear. has Bluetooth. You can hear your phone. You can do all this stuff, and it amplifies birds flying over your head. But at the same time, when it starts to hurt your hearing, it saves your hearing. So go check out soundgear.com. Yeah. Always got to make sure you wear protection. <laughs> <laughs> Only on your ears, though. Uh, protect your ears, not your dick. Not your dick. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's how you get children, folks. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I actually had my hearing tested last summer. <laughs> how was it? He told me, he's like, you know what, man? It's really not that bad right now. It's good. I was like, no shit. He's like, your left side's a little little worse. But I was like, yeah, I figured that. But it's And you're really- right-handed, right? Yeah. Isn't that interesting how you're going like this, and all the sound should be coming out here and in the front of the barrel? Your head's turned. Your ear's a little lower facing that way, so I, I get it. So your left ear would be so taking the brunt. Ears, yeah, right to the gun. I get that part, but yeah. He was like, no, you're really not that bad. But always, I'm going to suggest that you wear hearing protection to keep going. Mm-hmm. I was like, cool. But so. uh, back on the band thing, I have this 50 by 100 uh, sheep pasture behind my house. Yeah, yeah. First year I hunted it, we killed like 130 mm-hmm. geese out of it, which is mm-hmm. ridiculous a for a September. Yeah. And um, the gals who own this place are just like, holy shit. Yeah. I never thought anyone would kill a goose out of here. Right, right. And then the next year, I'm like, dude, I eat so much geese. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't need to just shoot everything that comes in here, you know? Yeah, right. And so then I started band checking. Mm-hmm. But then when you bring new people, you want them to shoot a goose, mm-hmm. all that stuff. So I've been shooting a lot less geese because I've been band checking a lot more because I've just seen how many you have shot mm-hmm. just by looking at their feet versus their head. Yeah, that's right. It's insane. Yeah. You know, so I've really started to adapt that big, sort of mentality. It's a big silver thing on their black foot. <laughs> you know, it's kind of easy. I mean, it's not easy. I've missed several, many of them. I was going over footage in Fergus Falls when we were filming in the pit at 88 on one of those disgusting migrator days, and we missed like two or three of them that were right there, dude, <laughs> just sitting in there and the camera's watching, and I'd replay it, and you could see it on the goose's foot go right over the pit and land right behind us like, God damn it. How does nobody see that? It flew right over everybody. Nobody's seen it. but They're looking at their heads because that's where they want to shoot. That's right. What do you think of the new black bands? Cool. I want one bad. And, I mean, if I if I land a goose with a black band on it, I'll see it. Like, I'll be able to look at it with the binos. might be a little bit harder to call out within the naked eye. But even then, if I got my binos up and I'm band hunting and a black band comes in and it's on a goose and I'm looking at that goose, I'll see it and kill it. Have you seen one die yet? I've never seen, I haven't seen one die. I figured we'd get one on a migrator day, but maybe this year. I hope we have a good migrator day this year. Last year kind of sucked. Last year's season sucked. It was bad. Yeah, God. It's bad for ducks, bad for geese. Yeah, we, every, every day in September, we'd kill 5 to 15, 5 to 15, 5 to 15. We never went out there and killed 40, 50 like we have in prior years. But then, I mean, it made up for it in November in Fergus because... Well, I think we killed like 850 or 950 in nine days. Yeah, 850 in nine days. Good Lord. It was the grossest thing ever. Every Did morning I'd wake up and it'd either be spitting snow or it'd be very cloudy. Really? And a good wind. Just rolling. Yeah, for nine days straight. And I'm like, oh my God. And it usually was a north wind too. <laughs> it was nasty. Almost didn't even brush my teeth most mornings. Just hopped out of bed like a pro wrestler. <laughs> Took off running <laughs> to the truck. Let's go. <laughs> Don't even need deodorant. Let's get out of here. It's goose on time. But yeah, that that nine day stretch whew, just burned him hard, so hard. When uh, I hired, we hired Carter to come out and film. My buddy Travis invited me out to Wisconsin for the early season, uh-huh. and he had shot sixteen bands. Oh, sixteen himself. Where? And for and where in Wisconsin? Oh, in Wisconsin. Yeah. And he's like, "You need to get out of here, bro." I'm like, mm-hmm. "All right." Yeah. So I was like, good. "Can I bring camera guy?" And he's like, "Absolutely." How many geese did we land that day? A lot. 
a lot. And Carter's like, can you shoot one or what? Yeah, <laughs> right. No, I'm band yeah, checking yeah, I'm them, dude. for leg bands, dude, yeah. They weren't working great either, though. No, they weren't working yeah. very great. They were landing see one, all over the place. Didn't no. See, damn. Yeah, you got to go with the right group of people when you're band hunting, man. If I'm band hunting, I'm either going by myself or I'm going with a friend. Because I'm not going to take you to my spot to go band hunting. And I got three buddies with me. And my buddy on the right sees the leg band before I do and shoots it right in front of me. Like, that's not why, you know? Mm. So I only go with, like, a me, myself, or I take a buddy with me. Mm-hmm. And then at that point, it's kind of like we do a coin flip. Like, all right, if you see the first one, if I see the first one and you won the coin flip, I will call it out for you. Like, is that one right there? Just put his head down, whatever, blah, blah. Sure. And you better do the same thing for me. And That's pretty cool. And just keep your eye on that bird, and I'm going to look for another one, too, so I can <laughs> try to get one, right? Right. Yeah. No, the the first day I went out there, we landed 450. Ew. They're at like 40 yards. So it's like, yeah, it's yeah. hard to find them, yeah. you know. But we were hunting with the farmer. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So he's like, oh, I haven't shot a goose since 86. Jeez. And it's like, okay, we're not we're not band checking. Yeah, you know, right, we're right. just trying to burn them down. You're right. And it's like, okay, how many have you shot? Right, right. You know? You're okay. Right. Yeah, we're not. landing geese and he's getting so itchy. Oh, I'm sure. I'm like... Okay, Travis, let's just shoot into him and let's make him, him happy, you know? Right, yeah, yeah. And then second day, uh, Carter came out, and then they just weren't working properly. Mm-hmm. They're they're doing it, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. they just land 40 yards that way. It's yeah, like, that shit. God. That's we a, tried switching the spread. and That's when you got to have the vinyls up right away. Right. But when they're in front of you, you can see them. So but they were, the they were burning out of the atmosphere, though. Really? Just, whoo, you can see all of their feathers just like Moving. straight up in the air. Because he got some really good slow-mo footage, and these things are burning down to the ground as fast as they can. And it's just like, ugh. I love them singles on Migrator Days where it looks like somebody threw a bowling ball out of a plane. (laughs) (laughs) There's one. And it's just like, (laughs) straight down. Oh, yeah. It's the best. You see every feather, like, on the, where the bone is. You see all those sticking straight up in the air, and you're like, oh, he's going to die so hard. Just coming fast. Yeah, I'm getting excited for it at this point, dude. It's it's about it's almost here, bro. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, Ju- July, August, September. Yep, <sighs> two and a half months, mm-hmm. two months. Are yeah. you gonna go out to North Dakota for no, their opener? Uh-huh. No. no, I'm done with that. That shit sucks. <laughs> I mean, dude, I've I've been out there ten times, and I think maybe five, six times, we've killed over forty or fifty. Other than that, it's like eight, <laughs> six. Yeah. It just sucks. Oh, well, they still they, have eggshell on their head. Oh, they're leaving the roost the opposite direction again. Oh, this field had 200 geese in it for a week straight, and now this morning they're going the opposite way. You know what I think is, and it doesn't help that they roost so close. Usually they're roosting very close to that mm-hmm. field. I think if you and a buddy grab some silhouettes or you grabbed maybe, you know, six DSDs or any type of full body, and you snuck out into that field at night. You didn't bring your truck. You didn't, or if you did bring your truck, you turned the lights off. You didn't have your music blare, and you and your buddies weren't so excited that it's opener, and you're yelling at each other. Because at night you can hear that like crazy, and I'm sure the geese are like, "What the fuck?" People might think I'm crazy, but I feel like I'm right. And you just snuck out in that field, and you just put out a dozen decoys, and then hid your blinds, and just lay there and wait for them to come. I bet they'd come. You think so? Mm-hmm. But another thing is too is I think maybe. <coughs> After you shot that first group, then they might quit. Maybe. But if they didn't hear you all morning long having a fucking party out there, maybe they'd be more groups would be more opt to come out there. Because mm. I've just had it so many times where you got ACDC rocking and people right. are, you know, going too close to the roof, shining the roof and shit. It's like, right. what the fuck are we doing out here? <laughs> yeah. I think the part that pisses me off about that August season in North Dakota is – like you said, they'll just go the opposite direction for zero reason. Mm-hmm. It's impossible to pattern mm-hmm. those birds. But then also, it's so hot that if you find them at night, they're not going to be there in the morning. Right. They're going to be there again at night. Mm-hmm. And then when you hunt in the morning, you're like, ah, oh, shit, they're going to be here at night. You go out there again right. at night, they don't show up. We've had our best hunts in the afternoon. At one time, me and that and August and, season? Yeah, me, Nick, and another guy went out there and... Just smoked them in an afternoon. There's only like 50 of them out there too, but it was right next to a tiny ass little North Dakota town we were staying in. So we're just like, oh, let's go out there. Fuck, I think we killed 35. Damn. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> but 
Yeah, I can't wait for it, dude. Can't come quick enough to be honest at this point. No, I'm uh I'm sick for it, you know. <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sick for it. It hurts, honestly. And it's like my wife is like, Well, I don't know if you should go and do that right now because hunting season is gonna start in two and a half months. And I'm like, Oh shit. Yeah. Right. Hunting season is gonna start in two and a half months. That's Maybe right. I should collect my brownie points now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I have the most amazing wife in the world, and she understands. She's like, mm-hmm. if you need to just go to Nebraska for three days out of nowhere, yeah, just yeah. go. Yeah, that's right. Can I come? It's like, yeah, you can come. Yeah, you can go. You got to stay in the truck, though. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't want to hear a word. <laughs> don't, touch, the don't touch anything. <laughs> don't touch anything. <laughs> <laughs> get, your, get your fucking feet off my dash, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to tell your significant other or your wife someday when she's like, whoa, what? You've been gone for two weeks. Like, what's your your, your line going to be? Get out of my house. <laughs> Get out of your house. <laughs> yeah, don't tell me what it is. I mean, it's a little different when it's your job, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, would you rather that I put on a collared shirt and sat at a desk and hated it? Or, or does it piss you off that I'm out here having fun? Really good at my job. Yeah. You know what really irks them? Because when they see you smiling and having fun in your Snapchats, <laughs> <laughs> then they just got to start a fight and come home. I can't tell you how many of my hunting buddies I've gone with, and there's a group of us, and there's always that one, like, uh, we must have been showing that we were having too much fun because he's outside pacing back and forth in front of the hotel window, like, all right, all right. And then he's got an attitude the whole time. I'm going to leave early tomorrow. It's like, God, dude, holy shit. Yeah, whatever, though. Well, that's why I told my wife, uh, long, long time ago. Yeah, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, you can either come with me. Yeah, or not come with or me. Or not. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. You that's can't right. keep me from being me. Yeah, and this is right. me. And a, a lot of guys let their significant other not be themselves. Right. You know, strip it's everything. Sad. I strip everything away from them. It's sad, man. Yeah, there's a lot of great women out there, dude, and there's a lot of guys that are very lucky to have that girl that lets them do them type of things, right? Right. But then there's, you know, just like anything. Some guys are at fault too. But oh, for sure. But, but do you know, like, the ones that don't get out to hunt as much as they used to, mm-hmm. and then they go on a hunting trip, the baby's doing this, yeah, and exactly. you leave me all alone. Like, yeah, is this right. always my responsibility? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, man, you just got to put your foot down. Uh, like, that, hey. that's, uh, that's long gone by now, by that time. You can put your foot down, but she's going to lift it right back up and chuck you across <laughs> the room. <laughs> Yeah. That was like my biggest fear, man, is like if I'm going to marry a woman and she's not approval, like she doesn't have, like I don't have her approval I to like. be supportive, dude. Do, like, good Lord. Yeah. I mean, is that too much to ask for being my significant other is to support me and let me enjoy my hobbies? I mean, don't strip my happiness away from me when I'm out being happy with my friends and shit, you know, like, God damn. This is when right. he should be hyping me up the most, you know? Mm-hmm. You only have three, four months out of the year to do it if you That's travel. Right. That's so right. it's yeah. like, you got me the rest of the year mm-hmm. other than making money. I'm right. here for you. Mm-hmm. Thank God my wife understands that. Yeah, I've always been lucky too. All my girlfriends that I've had during the hunting seasons, they get it. The one I got now is pretty good too. Either that or they just leave. Yeah. You know? Right. And then we don't mention them. Yeah, right. Remember that one girl eight years ago? No. No, yeah. <laughs> no, I, oh, don't. I thought you were like spe- looking at me like a specific time it happened to me. I was like, no, I don't remember that. <laughs> no. No. But, um, well, cool. Well, you already plugged your Upside app. Yep. So that's Upside, good dude. Download Upside. That app kicks ass. And then I'm going to make Carter put my code right here, too, for the Upside app. <laughs> Thanks, there Carter. There you go. Yep. Appreciate it. Well, dude, thanks so much for coming on and swapping stories and shit and teaching people how to be a better goose hunter. Yeah, dude. It's always a pleasure coming and hanging out with you. Yeah, dude. We always have such a good time, Joey. We do. We do. Yeah. We're going to be, uh, we're probably going to have to start a YouTube channel of us doing dumb shit. Yeah, absolutely. You know, what yeah. was that, uh, what was that thing in Oklahoma you talked about? It's like cow pie marathon. Oh, or- yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, like uh, cow shit throwing competitions and shit. Yeah, dude. Could you imagine a video of Joe and I, I throwing cow shit some at of each that other? Shit in the works, dude. There you go. Yeah, I didn't hear about it, so that's pretty cool. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> hey, Joey, leave your wife and child. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna go. It. We're gonna be big. <laughs> we gotta. We gotta give each other sepsis by throwing cow shit at each other. Yeah, face. that's right. Yeah. 
Yeah, dude. Well, guys, we're going to have a huge uh, giveaway here at 1,000 Reviews on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, so be sure to leave us a review. Go follow Joe on all of his social media channels. Thank you so much for watching. And the Upside App. And the Upside App. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal. All right, we'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya. <laughs>